50 Cent reminds Oprah of the truth about how she killed Ianla Van Zandt's career Join PopFlixone's community by subscribing to our channel and spreading the word about this video. If I may return to you for just a second, the pain is also emotional. Was that understood by everyone? Considering how monumental that event is. Whenever she brought up hip-hop culture, it was either to criticize it or something on my CD, which was the biggest launch in hip-hop. Oprah Winfrey, who has amassed an empire across multiple platforms, is truly unique and may be considered a queen of media. See the over a billion dollars worth of Oprah properties, including Oprah Radio, O, Oprah Magazine, Harpo Films, and Oprah.com. Although it may come as a surprise, the legendary talk show host is actually quite good at casting shadows. Whether she's interviewing a member of the general people or a member of the royal family, the TV personality is known for her sympathetic approach and her advocacy of kindness. She also helps individuals financially and with self-help. Plus, she has a slew of humanitarian accolades to her name. Oprah still has her low points, despite being a character reminiscent of a fairy godmother. The media queen has a history of destroying the careers of people she views as threats. 50 Cent, a rapper turned film producer, recently gave a chilling encounter about how she ruined the career of famous author and spiritual teacher Ian Levanzant, in addition to mocking Hollywood legends and belittling supermodels, making political jokes, and revealing family conspiracies. Vanzant is a spiritual teacher, TV personality, and author of African-American descent. Her work, inspired by the horrific tales she had as a child, serves to uplift and encourage people of color. Poverty, loss, and abuse were all parts of Vanzant's difficult childhood. The feisty black woman she is now is a product of her formative years, which were marked by both triumphs and tragedies. Vanzant faced an excessive amount of sorrow and misfortune throughout her childhood, and she has used these experiences to teach millions of people a valuable lesson. On her TV show, the author opened up about her experience of being raped by a family member. She claimed that she was a neglected child living in their home and that she cried out for love. Her determination to aid and liberate others was driven by the horrific experiences she had as a youngster. While still a young adult, Vanzant left her husband and went to law school. After three years she worked as a public defender in Philadelphia but she turned to literature after failing to find fulfillment in law. In 1992, she produced her debut book, Tapping the Power Within, a path to self-empowerment for black women, which would go on to win numerous accolades and pave the way for her subsequent work. More than 30 works spanning spiritual, psychological, and ethical themes have been penned by her since then. For instance, in his 2015 book Trust, Mastering the Four Essential Trusts, Vanzant guides readers through a variety of moral and ethical dilemmas, including dealing with a sibling's theft and other forms of familial betrayal. Do you want to find and claim peace, or do you want to be correct about how wrong they were? That is the question Vanzant addresses in her book. Her second profession as a writer garnered media attention for her work, which she devoted herself to saving. She met Oprah as a visitor in this class and went on to host her popular show afterward. Oprah fired Vanzant as her popularity skyrocketed, and the writer went on to launch her own talk program. However, the media magnate still wouldn't let her be alone. Oprah persisted in pursuing Vanzant. What really happened between two of the most well-known and significant black women in the world was eventually revealed by the renowned author, years after the fact. The partnership between the award-winning novelist and Oprah Winfrey ended due to a failure to communicate, but the author was impressed by the fact that the two were able to repair their connection. Oprah and Vanzant became friends after reading in the meantime in her book club. The TV broadcaster continued by inviting the celebrity on her 1998 talk show. While G. Vanzant was hosting Oprah's talk program, the Ianla Fix My Life star confessed to breaking certain protocols, the same ones that 50 Cent says Hollywood gatekeepers like Oprah employ to control people. According to Vanzant, who claims to have spent her childhood in the ghetto, she told The Breakfast Club in May 2018 that she broke several industry rules due to a lack of knowledge. There was no supervisor over me. I was unrepresented. I was ready to approach strangers and strike up conversations like if we were at key food. I was falsely accused of leverage because people in this industry failed to comprehend that aspect of my personality. That stuff was completely foreign to me. I merely expressed my desires. Several networks started contacting Vanzant while she was performing Change Your Life TV on The Oprah Winfrey Show, according to Vanzant. She then began to consider hosting her own show, but she insisted on doing it with Oprah. 
However, she claimed it was poorly received when Van Zandt approached her about it. According to Van Zandt, I was just being innocent and foolish when he asked, but the response was negative, leading to a rift in contact. However, we were successful in fixing that. Eleven years passed. They implied I wasn't prepared, but they never told me so. So I'm arguing that we should be able to do it here if they're asking for me. After leaving O's show to host her own at ABC, the Life Coaches show was ultimately cancelled. According to several people in the know, Oprah was heavily involved in the decision to discontinue the show. After then, the ex-lawyer worked off the air for a while. Van Zandt, who was invited to the Oprah Winfrey show in the last 25th season to voice their complaints, became a part of Oprah's Life Class show when she and Oprah worked over the breakup 11 years later. The rich business magnate, however, advised Van Zandt to obtain her own software. As a result, the Owen Network, which was formed by Oprah, became synonymous with Iyanla Fix My Life. Famous people including DMX, Hazel E., a reality star and rapper, and Karuish Tran, an actress and model, have sought her assistance on that show in an effort to improve their life. Following the airing of the second episode, Tran expressed her sorrow over appearing on the show on The Angie Martinez Show. I didn't understand. I am not sure, Tran stated in 2017. The translation may not have been perfect, in my opinion. It was strange because after that I wanted to keel over, not in a literal sense, but in the sense of wanting to go to bed and not check my phone. Subsequently, though, some female reviewers raved about it. The family of victim Kamiya Mobley later corroborated claims made by Jacob York, Van Zandt's boss, that the life coach pretended to be helping people while actually tormenting her client. Was Oprah really telling her what to do? Were those the same issues that caused them to part ways the previous time they attempted a collaboration? We'll learn more about it. Similar accusations were leveled by fans against Van Zandt after Tran's episode aired. What transpired on the show, however, was perceived differently by Van Zandt. They sought us out. I didn't approach them, she said. Locks are not present. Gates are not present. We were at her residence. I was not irritated by her. They approached us believing that appearing on my show would catapult her to new heights. Plus, I'm not into marketing or publicity, so they were surprised to see that I don't play when they arrived. York also attempted to drag it out of Tran when I asked him some tough questions. They aspired to do the same kind of crafting and building that I did. This is the reality. According to her, I abandoned her. By removing her from the room, he made it clear that he did not want to be asked these questions. I departed. I was prompted to respond by them. Yes, it is correct. However, Karuch is not an issue for me. I do not believe that her management had her best interests in mind throughout that period. Now see where she is. Van Zandt also had an intense interview with the late DMX, a rapper famous for taking on industry heavy hitters. There was no denying DMX's skill, just as there was for Van Zandt. However, following his passing, additional details regarding his difficult upbringing and its enduring effects were disclosed. His lengthy history of substance misuse and rehabilitation stays is well known to his fans. The addict's vulnerability shone through during X's appearance on Iyanla. Just how horrible things were at one point, fix my life. According to Van Zandt, X had an anointed spirit even if he had some misfortunes. In 2013, X made an appearance on the show. This was all in an effort to mend fences with his eldest son Xavier, who had grown distant from him as a result of his father's drug problems and the way he had treated Xavier's mother. It became more apparent as the show went on that X's anger and addiction were controlling him. Xavier, the rapper, got furious with Van Zandt at their reunion because he thought the latter was giving Xavier advice on what to say. He was also furious because, in his opinion, Van Zandt should have let the father and son speak without interrupting. X eventually lost it and started hurling obscenities at Van Zandt. Iyanla orchestrated this entire scheme to defame me in order to boost her ratings, he told TMZ later, adding, that woman is poisonous. My parting message to her was that she has the ability to s asterisk 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 me, and that power is still there. Oprah obviously hated X for exposing her, so was Van Zandt representing her? The participation of X on the broadcast made Van Zandt swear off any future collaboration with him. She couldn't handle the lack of respect and couldn't imagine him improving his mental health with all the people who were willing to help him. X said in 2019 that he would be game for a second chance on the show. Initially resistant, Van Zandt eventually came around and said that she felt she had let X down by not handling the delicate matter appropriately. Van Zandt recently told the presenters of The Breakfast Club that, following X's passing, he thought highly of the artist and prophet. He had been anointed, but never consecrated, 
Hence, no one had ever paid heed to or acknowledged his anointing, and he had to pay the price for his misbehavior. According to Van Zint, X was a kind giant, and she respected his commitment to his religion, even though they had a difficult time together. When he spoke about his grandma, something most people don't know, and how he could pray away his anguish, I could see his softer side. He is now at peace, having been anointed, and his legacy is strong. The general public seems to think that Oprah, after initially rejecting Van Zandt's request that she work according to her own standards, hired her and gave her advice on how to abuse her celebrity clients, a move that has obviously backfired. Her method of interviewing visitors has made her one of the most despised figures in the business. The educated attorney recently made the claim that she wants to counsel men on how to be present parents rather than absent ones. Consider Nick Cannon, who has been the target of much criticism due to his 12-child fatherhood from six separate women in the past 15 years. Many have questioned his ability to financially maintain his children's separate residences and the frequency with which he sees them. However, the humorous man has also been labeled as a deadbeat dad, a description that he categorically denies. But he recently had a meeting with the writer and life coach, and they discussed treatment and Nick's beliefs regarding his own life decisions. Van Zint claimed that a father is not a deadbeat if he is not permitted to have a relationship with his children. But what if he is capable, accountable, and has the responsibility, but he chooses not to? Because daddy never made sure our little daughters had enough sleep, a lot of them are into drugs and s and all sorts of bad stuff. Van Zint continued by saying that fathers should be involved in their children's life in more ways than one. The man who neglects his obligation to provide for his seed is, in my view, a deadbeat dad, she went on to say. A man who isn't comfortable being himself. I could care less if he's a grave digger or a bus driver. Show your children that you care by being there for them, not by showing them how much money you have. The doting father has come under fire for allegedly having affairs with more than one woman at the same time. While Nick's children with Mariah Carey include twins Moroccan and Monroe, his children with Brittany Bell include a daughter named Powerful Queen and two sons named Golden Sagan and Rise Messiah Cannon. In addition to his daughter Beautiful Zeppelin, he is the father of twins with Abby De La Rosa, Zion Mixolydian, and Zillion Air. In addition to his son, Legendary Love, from his relationship with Brie Tessie, the 43-year-old has a daughter, Onyx Ice Cole, from his marriage to Lanisha Cole. Alyssa Scott and Cannon are parents to two children. Zen, the couple's kid, passed away from a brain tumor when he was only five months old. Halo Marie is their shared daughter. In 2022, Cannon became a parent for the fifth time. According to what the creator of Wild and Out said in an interview with the Los Angeles Times, he has been unfairly criticized for his large family. The comments, however, are irrelevant as he has stated his intention to spend quality time with each of his children. He claimed that I had become a villain. You really can't be there for every single one of those kids, I hear it all the time. Therefore, I am officially a deadbeat dad. Oh, great. Is Oprah's agenda being expressed across Hollywood through Van Zandt, in your opinion? Please share your thoughts in the space provided. We will now conclude our discussion. Thank you for tuning in, and until we meet again.